Giyazuddin Bolban was the ninth Sultan of the Mamluk dynasty of Delhi. Giyazuddin was the vizier and heir of the last Shamsi Sultan, Nasir ad Din. He reduced the power of the treacherous nobility and heightened the stature of the Sultan. In spite of having only few military achievements, he was the most powerful ruler of the Sultanate between Shamsuddin il Tukmish and Alauddin Khilji. A born Turk, Bolban quickly rose to power under Shamsuddin and his successors, being one of the forty nobles and eventually the Sultan's vizier. After the Sultan Nasir ad Din's death, he was made Sultan Giyaz ad Din. He elevated the position of the Sultan in the Sassanid fashion and crushed the power of the forty nobles so that it could not usurp his rule. Giyaz made several conquests, some as vizier. He routed the Muts that harassed Delhi and reconquered Bengal, all while successfully facing the Mongol threat, a struggle that spent his son and heir's life. So it came to pass that upon his death in 1287 his grandson Kaya Kabad was nominated Sultan, undermining the achievements of his grandfather. In spite of having only a few military achievements, Giyaz ad -Din made civil and military reforms that earned him the position of the strongest ruler between Shams ad -Din il Tukmish and the later Alauddin Din Khilji, whose military achievements rest on the order established within the Sultanate by Giyaz ad -Din Bolban. Early life, he was son of a Central Asia Turkic noble. As a child he and others from his tribe, were captured by the Mongols and sold as a slave at Azi. Professor Kayali A New History of Indo-Pakistan. He was sold to Khwaja Jamal Ad-Din of Basra, a Sufi who nicknamed him Baha Ad-Din. The Khwaja brought him to Delhi where he and the other slaves were bought by Sultan Shams Ad-Din il Tukmish, himself a captured Ilbari Turk in origin. In 1232 CE, Bourbon was first appointed as a simple water carrier, but quickly rose to the position of Corsta by the Sultan. He became one of the most notable of the forty Turkic nobles of Delhi, or the Shilisa. During the reign of Razia Sultan, he was the Emir I Shikai or Lord of the Hunt, a position of some importance at the time, having military and political responsibilities. After her overthrow, he made rapid strides in the subsequent reigns earning the fief of Rewari under Baram Shah, and later became the Jagir of Hansi, which was an important fief. Bourbon was instrumental in the overthrow of Masat Shah, installing Nazaruddin Mahmud as Sultan and himself as his vizier from 1246 to 1265. Mahmud married one of Bourbon's daughters. Bourbon also installed Kish Luk Khan, his younger brother, as Lord Chamberlain and appointed his cousin, Shah Khan, to the Jagir of Lahore and Patinda. Bourbon's position did not go unnoticed by the other nobles and there was some resentment. His main antagonist was Imad ad Din Rihan, who in works written after Bourbon's time, is characterized as a Hindu Murtad, although some claim him to be of Turkic origin as well. Imad ad Din managed to persuade the Sultan that Bourbon was an usurper. Bourbon and his kin were dismissed and even challenged in combat. However, Negotiations between Bourbon and the Sultan had brought to the dismission of Imad ad Din at 1254, and Bourbon was reinstalled. Military campaigns, Bourbon's reign, according to Ziauddin Barani, was to instill fear of the governing power, which is the basis of all good government. Furthermore, he maintained that the Sultan was the shadow of God and introduced rigorous court discipline. He depended upon Turkish nobility but formed an army of two lakh made up of all castes. A portion of this army was made up of commandos. Bourbon had several military achievements during his vizierhood, first raising the Mongol siege of Achanda Masat Shah in 1246. When the governor of Bengal, Tural Tun Khan, revoked the authority of Delhi in 1275, Bourbon first sent the governor of Ward and then a second army, both of which met with failure. Bolban then accompanied a third army which reconquered the country, killing Tural and his followers. His son, Nazaruddin Bayra Khan, assisted him in this mission. Bolban then placed his second son, Bayra Khan, as governor. However, Bayra declared independence after Bolban's death, which he maintained for forty years. One of the famous military campaigns of Balban was against Mio, or Mayo the people of Mwat who used to plunder the people of Delhi even in the daylight. The distress caused by the Mio is well described in Barani's words, he has killed many Mayos in his military campaign. 
the turbulence of the Mewitis had increased, and their strength had grown in the neighborhood of Delhi, through the dissolute habits and negligence of the elder sons of Shamsa Dar-en, and the incapacity of the youngest, Nasir Dar-en. At night they used to come prowling into the city, giving all kinds of trouble, depriving the people of their rest. And they plundered the country houses in the neighborhood of the city. In the neighborhood of Delhi there were large and dense jungles, through which many roads passed. The disaffected in the Dobi, and the outlaws towards Hindustan grew bold and took to robbery on the highway, and they so beset the roads that caravans and merchants were unable to pass. The daring of the Mewitis in the neighborhood of Delhi was carried to such an extent that the western gates of the city were shut at afternoon prayer, and no one dared to go out of the city in that direction after that hour, whether he traveled as a pilgrim or with a display of a sovereign. At afternoon prayer the Mewitis would often come to the Zahors, and assaulting the water carriers and the girls who were fetching water, they would strip them and carry off their clothes. These daring acts of the Mewitis had caused a great ferment in Delhi. Bourbon took upon himself the exterminating the turbulent tribes of Mat and Orwood, destroying strongholds and villages. He then built military outposts, gave land to soldiers and Afghans to settle. He garrisoned forts at key locations, cleared forests and ensured safe roads. He also unsuccessfully laid siege to the fortress of Ranthambor, but did recapture Gwalia from the Rajats. In 1247, Bourbon suppressed a rising of the Shandela chief of Kalinjar. Bourbon's military reign also distinguished with his success repelling Mongol army. This could be achieved due to his cavalry horses were better situated to India climate and naturally bred larger than Mongols' horses. The extreme heat of summer constituted the Mongols a Euro unregistered trademark problem in India, as the quotation from Giovanni indicates. Their incursions seem to have been brief even when not defeated by the forces of Delhi, and to have taken place in winter, because only then was it cool enough for the comfort of the Mongols a Euro unregistered trademark horses. Reign as Sultan Since Sultan Nazaruddin did not have a male heir, so after his death, Bourbon declared himself the Sultan of Delhi. Bourbon ascended the throne in 1266 at the age of 60 with the title of Sultan Giusuddin Bourbon. During his reign, Bourbon ruled with an iron fist. He broke up the Shah Halgani, a group of the forty most important nobles in the court. Bourbon wanted to make sure everyone was loyal to the crown by establishing an efficient espionage system, in the style of the Umayyad Barid. Sultan Bourbon had a strong and well organized spy system. Bourbon placed secret reporters and news writers in every department. The spies were independent authority only answerable to Sultan. Furthermore, Bourbon had his nobles punished most harshly for any mishap, including severe treatment of their own slaves. One of his nobles, Malik Bakbak, the governor of Badorn, was punished for ordering one of his slaves to be beaten to death, apparently when being drunk. Another governor, Halai Bak Khan, was handed over to the slave's widow for punishment. Bourbon employed spies, brides, to inform on his officials. About his justice Dr. Ishwari Prasad remarked so great was the dread of Sultan's inexorable justice that no one dared to ill-treat his servant and slaves. Bourbon reorganized the military against the threat of the Mongols. He reorganized the revenues of the Iqtadars, which had been passed on to the children of their original holders from the time of Shams din or maintained their hold of the Iqta even after they ceased to serve in the military. The old Muqtas, who could not serve as military commanders for their revenue, were to be dismissed from their fief and settled with a pension of 40 to 50 tankers. The younger MUQTAS had been taxed for the surplus revenue and the children and women who took possession of the IQTA of their forebearers, were to be deprived of their IQTAS and compensated with the money required to sustain them. However, he was partially dissuaded from this ruling due to the advice of the old court Fakhr Din, and the old nobles retained their lands. Bourbon's steps against the nobility were so extreme as to raise suspicion from his brother, Shah Khan, who is said to have never visited Delhi. It appears that resentment between the brothers had to come to a degree that made the Sultan poison his brother. Bourbon's court was an austere assembly where zest and laughter were unknown and where wine and gambling were banished. 
he introduced rigorous court discipline such as prostration before the king and kissing his feet. Nevertheless, Gayusuddin Bolban still went on hunting expeditions, though these were more frequently used as a form of military training. Death Bolban ruled as the Sultan from 1265 until his death in 1287. Bolban's heir was his older son, Prince Muhammad Khan, but he perished in a battle against the Mongols on March 9, 1285. His other son, Baira Khan, was reluctant to assume the throne, and sought to remain the ruler of Bengal instead. Bolban therefore chose his grandson, Kaikas Rao, as heir apparent. However, after his death his nobles nominated Kayakabad as sultan. Kayakabad reigned, while his father, Baira Khan, asserted independence in Bengal. Kayakabad was very weak and incompetent and eventually fell to stroke and had to pass the rule to his three years old son, Shamsuddin Kamaz, who was eventually dethroned by his guardian, Jalaluddin Firas Khilji in 1290, bringing an end to the slave dynasty. Today, tomb of Bulban wherein a true arch and a true dome were built at the first time in India, lies within the Mira Uli Archaeological Park in Delhi, adjacent to which stands that of his son Khan Shaden Wall Mosque. The domes of both the tombs have collapsed and the structures are ruined structures were restored in the recent years when the conservation work began in the park. References